What's up, y'all? This is Moochie, and you rocking with Moochilla's Review. So hit the hammer, because you came through. Al, I'm talking to you about Power Book 2, Season 2, Episode 4. The name of the episode is called Getting These Ends. And we're going to do a breakdown of the episode scene for scene, as well as see if we can make some predictions for the following episode. So let's get into it. Al... I'm supposed to tell my husband about another man paying my nephew's million dollar bill. I don't know, Monet. Maybe tell him I did what I needed to do to protect our son. This episode starts out with Professor Milgram waiting for Zeke. She gets a text message from him. But it's not Zeke that show up. It's Monet. She shows up in the parking lot. I don't know how she didn't figure this out. And she meets, tells her about leaving Zeke alone. And she needs to find out who killed Jabari. So Tariq goes to see Davis McLean and Sachs. He gives them a heads, up, a heads up about the gun that was found with Jabari's body. And that it was a police officer's gun. Sachs smells it a mile away. He wants to know how he knows all of this. Davis McLean is basically telling Sachs he got to keep his eyes on the prize. These people are paying, and we don't care about the other factors in this. You're a defense attorney at the end of the day. Next, we see a meeting taking place at the college with Professor Milgram, Simon Stearns, Councilman Tate, the dean, and along with Officer Whitman. Professor Milgram is taking off talking to the students. They're going to have Councilman Tate become, be the liaison between the police as well as the college and they also want to try to make the image of the school look better so they want to get the police off of the campus as soon as possible they want to try to crack this case and they want them to stop pursuing Zeke for this murder of Jabari Monette meets with Davis McLean she wants him to handle Zeke's case she goes to the safe to pay him because she's at the bar and she finds out that the safe is empty. Now, I must, I'm, Diana took this money to pay for her father's case. But Monette don't think that. She feel like the people that came to fix the windows to put the bars on it robbed her. But you can see the safe wasn't broken in like that. And whoever broke into it do the combination. Let me know what y'all think in the comments. It was obvious that Diana stole the money. She got this guy hemmed up with her foot on his face, ripped his ear off, and she kills dude. So Monette gets back to the house. They have a family meeting with Zeke, Diana, Kane, and Drew. And they basically make a plan to get this money together. And she wants Drew to stay at the house and keep her eye on Zeke. And she also mentions that she killed the guy that stole the money. And Diana looks guilty right here. She looks guilty and she knows that she cost the man his life because of the money she took for her father. Let me know what y'all think in the comments. Do you think she's going to, well, she is going to find out that she steals the money. But I want to know what her reaction is going to be. Let me know what y'all think. Well, this is the defining moment that we know that Diana stole the money because she's texting Davis McLean and he not giving that money back and he not going to put it on Zeke's case. It's a done deal. So Kamal Tate is officially added to the Jabari murder investigation alongside with the DA, Jenny Sullivan. And my question is, do you think he's going to stay by the book or is he going to let things go and he also wants to do a search for Officer Ramirez. Do you think he's going to help his brother out with this case? Let me know what y'all think in the comments. So Mecca questions Kane about him being serious and wanting to be a part of his operation. And this is where he finds out about Zeke needing a lawyer. So Mecca wants Kane to get rid of his competition, this guy named Mahoney. And he's going to rob all of his spots. And he gets to keep $50,000 $50, as a fee. So Sachs searches through Jenny Sullivan's things and finds out that the, cop, the gun does belong to Ramirez, the cop. 
Brayden is a getaway driver for Kane. And somebody rolls up on him. And he said he's waiting for Ronnie, Bobby, Ricky, and Mike. But do you see what I see? Dude was about to jack Brayden. But it went sideways. He thought he was going to get that car. But it went sideways, y'all. And these people came out shooting at him, but it's over with. Kane got the money and he's out. This is also one of the, my questions in my trailer breakdown when I asked who, was this a real thing with him robbing these people or was it a setup to get Brayden on? But it was actually real. So Lorenzo will not sign off so she could pay for Zeke's defense. He won't sign off on the house. So my question is this. Do you think this is the beginning or defining moment, the beginning of the end of the Tejada's marriage? Let me know what y'all think in the comments. It's not like he didn't say she could. He won't sign off on the house, but he didn't say she couldn't have any money. He told her to use the money that was at the bar. But you know that money's gone already. So, like I said, do you think this is a defining moment, the beginning of the end of their marriage? Let me know what y'all think. So, a reporter is questioning Zeke. Zeke is outside. I don't know why he came outside if he know all of this is going on right now. Drew comes up, and he makes the matter even worse by punching the reporter and knocking the reporter down. So, now, this is going to just make things worse for Zeke's problems. It's just got magnified with this situation. So Monette regroups with the family to see how much money they have collected so far, and it's not even enough. Now, out of all of them, Drew collected the most money because he got a GoFundMe that the basketball team set up, and they also forfeited the game, and they raised some money that way. And his efforts seemed like they were all in vain because after him punching the report out, it just made things worse. In this scene, Drew shows a lot of resentment towards Monet. My question is, do you think that if the family splits, which side would Drew take? Will he go with his father or will he still stick with Monet? Let me know what you think in the comments. In this jewelry heist scene, I just wanted to point out that Brayden has no mask on. And also, they show that this is digitally recorded. So I want to know what do y'all think. Do y'all think this is going to come back to haunt Brayden where he's going to be in the line of fire with Detective Ramirez or these heists, these robberies that are going on? Let me know what y'all think in the comments. Kamal Tate comes through and finds a videotape at a convenience store with Zeke on it. And it proves that he has an alibi and is checking out. And he's letting Whitman know he needs to back off of him now because of the simple fact he his alibi checked out. But Whitman does not want to back off because he feels like he hired Detective Ramirez to do the hit. The interview is going fine with Jamel Hill and Zeke. And then it goes left. It goes left when she asks him certain questions. And he messes up. Even his family knew he was going to mess up. Talking about Diana. She really was like, do you think Zeke could really pull this off? The family wasn't convinced he could do this. I want to know why all that money they paying for Davis McClain. Why is the lawyer not sitting out there with them on the set? Because he should have been right there where... He could have shut things down immediately. Let me know what y'all think in the comments. I wanted to point out that during this interview, this is when they find out that Detective Ramirez's gun is at the scene where Professor Jabari got killed. It's so obvious here. Kane looks so guilty and he it's just a telltale sign. So immediately Monette knows her, that her son is connected with this. He's connected with it. He got his hands all up in the mix. And he just messing everything up. And now she's got to make a choice between Zeke and Kane. And she picked Zeke. 
Because she knows that this kid is innocent. And he's, if they find Ramirez's body now, it will put him in the clear. Monette also finds out at this moment, Davis McLean is paid off. And it's not through her. I call this Drew's Michael Colleone Godfather moment. Work. So this one time, you can ask me whatever you want about my family. Okay, I'll let you ask just one question about my business and my family and go. Make it good. Do you think good. that Everett I like is going part. to be a threat to Drew by running his mouth? Let me know what y'all think in the comments. Monette meets with Dante, questions him about paying for Zeke's lawyer. She's trying to figure out what his angle is. And this was the aha moment of the episode. This is when we find out that Mecca is Zeke's father. And Zeke's mother is Monette. So now that all of this is out. How's everything going to play out? How do y'all think things are going to play out? I want to do a short video. I might come back and do a short video. I'm going to put a little vote in the comments on my community tabs. And let me know what y'all think. Now, Tariq comes to Laura's room and he has the look on his face like he's been defeated today. Everything that could went wrong went wrong. The interview with Zeke. As well as his grandmother coming there, tearing him a new one and ready to go to court with him. Laura has on this watch, a Rolex watch. Laura comes from money. Tariq sees the watch, knows about Rolex watches himself. He has a collection, a collection that he inherited from Ghost, his father. Now, Rolex watches don't tick. So do you think Tariq knows that something is fishy with this watch? Let me know what y'all think in the comments. Ramirez's body is found. The death is two weeks prior to Jabari's. So this right here puts Zeke in the clear. But remember, before they went to the body, Kamal found Jabari's laptop. My question is, do you think this is going to put Tariq in the line of fire? With them coming after him now. Let me know what y'all think. I was so mad at Kane. I wanted to roll around on the ground and fight with him. So Kane puts this badge in the drawer in the dorm room. We don't know if it's Tariq's drawer or if it's Brayden's drawer. Let me know what y'all think in the comments. Because we right now, he could be setting either one of them up. Now if he sets up Tariq. It's going to be bad, hard for him to get out of this one. But if it's Brayden, Brayden might be able to get off on this. So let me know what y'all think. If you're finding my channel for the first time, please like, share, and subscribe. And hit the hammer because you came by. Answer the questions in the comments. And let me know what you think about the video. And please tune in for more of my material. And later. Hit the hammer because you came by. Please like, share, and subscribe. And later.